All right, Fabiana, please uh, take it away. Okay, awesome. I'll share my screen then. Okay, okay. I guess everyone can already see the screen. I'll be... Yes. Okay, so... Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to me to be here uh, with you today. Thank you for the, the invitation, of course. Um, I'm Fabiana and I'm the, the co-founder and chief data officer at a, a startup called White Ada. Um, and I'm here today basically to uh, bring one question that hopefully uh, I'll be able to answer by the end of today's session, which uh, is essentially what to expect from synthetic data generation. Um, I'll start just with uh, the, a basic explanation around what is in the end synthetic data. I, I think it's a, a, a common ground we have to get uh, if we are uh, digging into the, the tutorial of integration between grid expectations and the generation of synthetic data. So in a nutshell, synthetic data can be defined as any data that was not collected from a real world event. So this means that this data is artificially generated and aimed to mimic real data in terms of the, the essential characteristics. So I would say that synthetic data is around for quite some time already, but I think nowadays we can consider it far more interesting for its ability to replicate perfectly um, the, the behavior of the real data which is very essential for machine learning for purposes, for example. Um, so essentially, synthetic data, we can see it or uh, use it in replacement, for example, to the actual data. So this is why nowadays it's so interesting for, for purposes of structured data, where sometimes privacy is an issue, we can consider synthetic data as an option, as now, besides the statistical properties, it can also ensure uh, privacy. At, it does not include any re-identification or uh, potentially to re-identify anyone, as in a nutshell, none of the events are real. So, but how can we generate this data or how can we create this data? So if you are thinking about generative models, um, then yes, you're right. And that's what we will be using um, through the tutorial I'm going to, to share with you um, for the presentation. Uh, I brought you here just a few open sources on image or the generation of synthetic uh, images, uh, not because it's exactly what we do at Data but because there's um, are very uh, amusing and very interesting ways to learn what is synthetic data, especially through images. Here you can see that this person doesn't exist. So it generates realistic faces of persons in, and you also can transform yourself into an anime, which is always interesting. Uh, and of course, this has pretty cool um, repos a GitHub repos where you can learn about generative models, but in a real world environment, like the ones uh, we are seeking to tackle at Y Data, uh, this has less value. Uh, nevertheless, it gets very easy to extrapolate from this image reality to areas such as autonomous driving, where synthetic data is being used to augment data sets and to create scenarios that otherwise you wouldn't be able to capture from real world events. Uh, but again, what about structured data? The data that more commonly we, we found in organizations, our day-to-day -day lives, um, it's a lot of that, it is structured. Uh, why would you, we in the end leverage synthetic data if we could just use the real one? That's probably one of the questions. Uh, the truth is that uh, real data uh, in a nutshell is not always a good fit for your machine learning purposes, as you would, you would expect. It's not perfect. Sometimes it's not accessible in a timely manner. This is where I do believe synthetic data can play an important role. Uh, in my opinion, it can be considered as uh, one of the next big things around data science and machine learning due to its versatility, for example. 
Uh, let's take uh, a look at this particular image where we clearly say, see uh, a problem of balancing data sets. So we have females way less represented than males in a data set. Of course, uh, we have a bias problem here. For example, by training a synthesizer uh, on the female class, which is less represented, you can learn the behavior of this population, of the characteristics of this type of population, and afterwards generate more events that mimics this behavior in, and ensures you that, that in the end you get a more balanced or um, fair data set, let's say. Of course, this is a very simplistic example of how you can leverage synthetic data um, to improve your data sets, but uh, well, it's a fairly easy, easy one to understand. In a nutshell, uh, as I was saying, synthetic data can be leveraged for, for many purposes, from balancing data sets by augmenting the class underrepresented to mitigate bias or fairness, but also to enable and uh, make faster the development of machine learning solutions on data sets that previously were not available due to privacy concerns. Uh, it's very easy to understand the benefits that this can bring definitely for areas, areas such as healthcare. Uh, um, in my per perspective, it can be totally game changer. But now let's go to the tutorial now that we have the, the all the same ground around what is synthetic data and how it can be used. I guess one of the main questions um, I made myself all, all also during the process of creating and generation, generating synthetic data is who in the end guards the guards, right? So how can we ensure that this synthetic data does also have uh, the quality that we need in order to replace or be used for machine learning purposes, but also how can we ensure that this synthetic data does fit business or the expectations um, that we know uh, it exists within the data set. In a nutshell, as in any other machine learning model, we have to ensure that the data we are generating through the synthesis does apply for the use cases we need. Um, so uh, one of the, the ways we did, uh, and, and in, in, a, in a way, what, what do we expect from synthetic data was the, the, the question we asked ourselves. And we decided to use uh, here great expectations uh, that was developed. It's an awesome framework, and especially for in general data scientists, and it's also a very cool and easy way to control over the process of synthetic data generation. And that's exactly the, the, the use case or the tutorial I brought to you today. Uh, by leveraging this business knowledge and also certain data rules we see uh, around data sets. For example, let's say we, we are in a using a data set from healthcare, where we do have heights and weights, we, we have a kind of certain expectation of weights and heights where things make sense. So this is a type of thing that you can just ensure through the use of a framework such as great expectations that in the output of your synthetic data generation, you are not keeping things nonsense. And that's exactly what we did. Um, I'll quickly jump um, into the, the use case or tutorial. Um, we have decided to explore an augmentation use case of the minority class. Uh, in the, for this particular exercise, we have leveraged the credit card data set from Kaggle, which is familiar for the, for the, the majority of the, the data science audience. Uh, and in this case, we wanted to augment only the, the minority class. Uh, as you can see from the flow in this slide, the process, uh, this process of ensuring the, the data quality through expectations, it's kind of also iterative. So it's not only a way to ensure that the output 
does fit what we know from the business or what we know from the rules, but it also it's a way to that we can manipulate or uh, ensure that our synthesizer is uh, training on the right data and delivering the right results. Let me now uh, jump into the fun part. Well, let's jump into the, the, the Jupyter Notebook. We made this available in our GitHub and open source repository. So if you do want to, after this session, explore a bit further uh, what we have done, how we can integrate great expectations and the generation of synthetic data. If you are curious, you can easily find this, this notebook and tutorial and you can run on your own. Of course, for the use case we have done with the credit card data set, but feel free to experiment with others that might more fit your use cases. To begin with, of course, um, the first step is, uh, as you probably are familiar, to set um, the project structure uh, with the data context. That that was um, that is the first step. Uh, we have done this using the the the, the CLI interface, but you can do uh, as you prefer. Um, afterwards, you can. Um, you should get your data. So in this case, we have loaded the data set using Pandas data frame. And afterwards, um, we configured a data source uh, through great expectations while using our Pandas, uh, our data that was read through the Pandas. Prior any training of our synthesizer, it was the step where we had to create the expectation suit uh, using the, the, our great expectations profiler. This is the step where, as a data scientist, I am already aware of uh, what I want to see from the data, what are the characteristics and human data quality that I want to see uh, replicated in my synthetic data. And this is definitely the first thing you should do prior training and any synthesizer. So it's not the rules are the ones that control the quality and not uh, the outputs of the synthesizers that should control the expectations. Otherwise, you are deviating a bit the whole objective uh, of using um, the suit. After um, after setting the expectations, it's now time to uh, go through the usual process and train the synthesizer. Of course, as we want to keep it to the fraud or the less represented class, uh, we did some transformations on the data. So we did um, filter by the, the data we were interested in. In this case, it's only 500 rows, which is a very small data set but it's still uh, a viable data set to be synthesized and afterwards augmented. Of course, it's always important to not augment uh, in a sense that, um, let's say that if you have 10,000 records and you start and you learn from a population so small, it's not expected that you sample just 10,000 records and you expect all the records to be very different and very variable. There is always a trade-off. So based on your training data set, you have to be careful on how much you augment your data. Okay, it's, it's just the nature of data synthesis. After training the synthesizers, uh, we are, um, the process is given the data set is pretty small. We are using again uh, for this process. This GAN is available in our uh, open source, which is the Wasserstein GAN. Um, we support both categoricals and numericals. It's uh, you. You just go ahead and you you run the the synthesis problem problem right away. You don't need to do data processing prior. After training, um, you are good to go to analyze whether your um, outputs do fit uh, your expectations or your uh, expectation suite. Okay, this is the normal. Um, you can evaluate then. So this is the normal process. You do create your checkpoints. You do 
uh, use your data docs that are generated uh, by great expectations to understand how does it look that your synthetic data, uh, what problems does your synthetic data have? And this is where you can reiterate the process. Either your synthesis process uh, did not train as expected, meaning you might need to tweak some hyperparameters or uh, some of the generation or some of the outputs that you are getting are not correct and need to be removed from the data that you have generated or put it aside in order to be further analyzed um, so you can iterate or get back to the, the generation process. So as you can see, the integration is fairly easy. It's not much different from what you would do with a data set that you, you already have on your own. The only difference is here is um, you are uh, integrating a new step in your machine learning process, which is generating data. And you are integrating that process with uh, a way to be sure that your generation or your outputs are correct as you would expect. Um, well, uh, I know we are almost uh, on the limit of the time we have available. So I'll leave up for anyone that might have questions. Of course, everything that you are seeing here you find it available uh, in our open source, like the, the white data synthetic. Uh, feel free also to, to join our community. Um, we, we, would, um, we would like to invite you to become part of our data centric community as well. Um, and any questions, feel free. Thanks, Fabiano. That was awesome. Really cool. Um, yeah, definitely lived up to the hype for me. I was very excited to see the presentation. Uh, really cool. Really cool to see the uh, the bit about um, the bias and data. Uh, that that's mm -hmm. something that you know we're really interested in creating that package for Fair AI. Um, yeah. So I think that'd be a good a good uh, combination between Y data and and the Fair AI package with great expectations. Definitely. I saw that in your roadmap in the beginning of the presentation today. Uh, and definitely, I do think it's, uh, it's something very interesting to explore from both a perspective of uh, profiling and expectations, but also on the side of, at least on the wide data side, on, at the mitigation perspective, let's say, of the problem. Cool. Um, oh, I think we might have a question in the, in the chat. Oh yeah, we should definitely make sure we share those those projects. Um, yeah. If if you don't mind, actually, after this, we can just put them either send them to me or we can put them right into the uh, the announcements channel in our yeah. in our Slack, so people have access. And I'll make sure to include it in the blog after, so everybody has access to it. Of course, of course, we'll we'll be happy to. Um, there is the the notebook, but also we have the um, the Medium blog. Uh, where we both uh, share the step by step uh, the 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 content of this presentation. Yeah, perfect. Uh, what what's the best way for people to keep up with uh, the project with Y Data? Definitely our Slack and also the the open source GitHub. I uh, I guess we um, through there it's the best way we can keep up. You know, with the updates things. We know the, the community might need on the side of synthetic data uh, that might be useful. Um, so any feedback, uh, usually it's like it's a, it's a good option, yeah. Awesome, oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to share, we'll share those links as well so that uh, people can, can stay involved. Awesome, well, yeah, thanks so much. Looking forward to uh, doing more stuff with Y Data. Awesome, thank you so much for having us as well. Yeah, of course, our pleasure. All right, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, again, keep keep an eye out for uh, the Y Data uh, stuff that you can interact with. Um, join their community in Slack and the GitHub, uh, and uh, keep an eye out for. Oh, go! Well, actually, just go sign up. Go sign up for the hackathon. Uh, it's gridexpectations.devpost.com. Uh, yeah, and and keep uh, join join the webinars, and we'll see you at the uh, next community event. Thanks everyone.